Next on Meet the Farmer TV, local food comes to the University of Virginia Hospital. Meet the Farmer TV is made possible by Planet Earth Diversified, Melly Productions, and Leslie P. Jenkins Photography and Graphic Design. Culpepper's Channel 21, helping to preserve the agricultural history of Virginia, and In the Kitchen Magazine, serving the community and everyone who loves good food. I'm Michael Clark, your host for Meet the Farmer TV. This week we're going to check out local food and even a farmer's market right inside the UVA hospital cafeteria. So Morrison's started in 93? Doing, the company doing started in the 30s, but um, they came here to this account in 93. Okay. They had, and what, what did UVA do before then? They had Aramark. So Aramark did both the students and the health? I don't know what the students were doing at that time, but at that time, Aramark had this account. Okay. That was before I came, so I don't know what was going on on the academics. So did you move to the area with I did. With I was living in New Orleans. Really? Happily ever after. Oh. And they called me up and said, we've got a new account at the University of Virginia in Charleston. You have to come here. Would you like to move? And I said, sure. <laughs> so. So what do you do? I, um, I am a member of the um, management team, so I participate in the... Um, Food, system, uh, food service management, but my main job is to manage the dietitians. Okay. We have 42 dietitians, and they work all over in uh, satellites uh, as much as an hour or two away from Charlottesville, and um, so that's that's so, a good. So are they analyzing the the nutritional requirements for patients mm -hmm. so off of charts or? They do that, but uh, for the purpose of the patient menus, that's done yeah, by flies, <laughs> that's done by um, the company Morrison. So you, you kind of have uh, guidelines and yeah, yes, and, uh, there's a uh, there's a company um, menu for uh -huh. patients. It's a seven-day menu. <laughs> we need some sticky tape here. And uh, so they actually the design the, the science and then and then yes, and then and analyze it. So is that like a list of things that then the, the doctors and nurses select from for the patients? No, we 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 design the diets and then the doctors order the diets. Okay. Yeah. So menu does the diet design. Yes, okay. exactly. It's all corporate. It's a corporate patient services uh, menu and uh, cafeteria menu. Okay. The patient services menu is one week long, seven days, and the uh, cafeteria menu is three weeks long, and it changes with the seasons. Oh. So now, how do you work in this local stuff now? So oh, you, you got all this in? design okay. somewhere else. I uh, can't not work in the local stuff because uh -huh. I woke up about 2007 and realized that the food system as we know it is well widely known to be broken. Mm -hmm. um, it's uh, not helping people be healthy. We have an epidemic of obesity and chronic disease states. Um, you know, the biggest killers, um, four of them, are directly related to diet and, and food. Heart disease and stroke and cancer and diabetes. Uh -huh. And it's just not working. And then I looked at um, our, my children and my grandchildren and the way things are going. Our food system is not sustainable. I don't want them to be able to eat and all their cohorts to be able to eat. Mm -hmm. So I decided we all have to start. We all have to do something. So I'm just learning as much as I can about it. Uh -huh. And being in this uh, institution, uh, what better place than healthcare to work on improving people's health? Yeah. Hospitals have a huge opportunity and um, responsibility to promote health through food. Yeah. Now, if if all this is kind of designed offsite in a in a, in a corporate office mm -hmm. somewhere for, mm -hmm. for a sort of universal 
application to all sorts of facilities, not just mm -hmm. here in Virginia. Mm -hmm. How do you then kind of weave in the local products? You just sort of oh. do some substitutions of, well, well, they need potatoes, so let's don't get the dried right. flakes, let's get some real right. ones. We're lucky because Morrison has a food philosophy, and that philosophy includes use as much local produce as possible. Oh. I mean, we are so lucky. We, we, we don't have to work as hard, and we've been given permission, if you will, to use the local food hub. Mm -hmm. I mean, normally a food service operation goes for the best pricing, mm -hmm. uh, traditionally. So, and that's usually the big distributors and the big bulk buying and not local. Right. But because of our food philosophy, because um, our CEO uh, actually required greeting for his higher ups at Morrison was uh -huh. Omnivore's Dilemma. Okay. You see? And so we, yeah, uh, we benefit from that. Um, Morrison has a sustainable, um, it, at Morrison is actually a uh, sector of a larger company called Compass. And Compass is the biggest food service company in the world. And they are also very supportive of sustainable. In fact, they have a whole sustainable division. And uh, they've done a three-year pilot on supporting farmers in the middle, ag in the middle, they call it. And, and they've done it in three states, one being North Carolina and one being Maryland. And so that, that's kind of close by. But the point of it is, is to support farmers in the middle who are big enough to maintain the supplies needed by a big institution like us. Okay. So that's the kind of company we work for. That's why we're lucky. Yeah. So. Now, there's been a lot of science to design these menus and, mm -hmm. and how to prepare the food. and food safety mm -hmm. as well as nutrition. Oh yeah. Are there variances with the local product that you that that well, cause some you know, do you have to do some testing or do you no. have to No. Yeah. We just uh, we we use the local food hub and we know that they look at farmers with good agricultural practices mm -hmm. and they have liability, they have traceability if there is ever a safety issue, we know exactly what farm each food item came from, okay. and it could, it could be traceable. Um, unlike the industrial food system, where everything's mixed up and goes all over the country, and it's very hard to trace. Yeah, recently we had a real problem with peanuts, where a oh, yeah. small contamination oh. got into oh, yeah. millions of products very right. quickly. Right. So. Um, Safety is, is a huge thing, but... Um, what about nu nu the nutrition part? Well, is there a variation? I mean, it, certainly there's got to be a difference between yeah. a, the local potatoes from okay. one locality to okay. another, and then there's, for dried flakes, it's got to right. be a different Oh, thing. my, yes. Yeah, well, the, the central aisles of the grocery store is full of processed, industrial-produced uh -huh. foods. And, yes, y y you know... It, it's getting away from the original whole state as grown from the ground, um, which has the most optimal nutrition. So the we more you mess have with science it, about that, we don't have an, we don't have nearly enough research. I mean, who's going to pay for research for fruits and vegetables? It's, right. it's not like a drug company who wants to sell a drug and they put lots and lots of money into it. Right. So there is research, but there's not a lot. Um, so is this just sort of an intuitive feel that you're, you're saying, uh, well, no, I, I we, know this fresh food has got to be better? We or? have some, re there's been some research done here at UVA, yeah. you know, comparing, you know, conventionally grown tomatoes with um, organically grown tomatoes and the different nutrients and, and how they measure up to each other. And uh -huh. there are some differences. Okay. They're not profoundly huge, but there's, you know, when you say nutrients, that's, you think of vitamins and minerals. Right. Okay. There's not a whole lot of those. What there is a lot of is something called phytochemicals. Uh -huh. And there are thousands and thousands. There could be 100,000. I mean, we used to say 5,000 when we went up to 8th and we went up to 10. It's, it's just, you know, and it's, it's components in food that apparently work in different ways that protect us, basically. Mm -hmm. And um, different ones tend to go in, into... Um, 
sort of uh, groups, like uh, based on color, actually. Uh -huh. The ones in red foods, the ones in orange foods, the ones in green foods, and white foods, and purple foods. Don't forget purple. Yeah. Um, so that, you know, uh, if you got a wide variety of fruits and vegetables on a regular basis, you're getting the bulk of what we know of as phytochemicals. Um, so we really need to add to this food pyramid sort of multiple colors. <laughs> yes, right. But there are so many names. I mean, have you ever heard of zeaxanthin? I've, I've heard uh, of xanthin, yeah. Zeaxanthin and, and anthocyanin. You've uh -huh. heard of lycopene and lutein yeah, yeah. and those. Okay, there, there's just isoflavones. There's just a long, long, long Huge list. Huge list. Right. Now, are they so, more fragile so that the fresh food's going to be a little more potent it's, and processed? It's... Um, they're going to be the highest, the fresher the food is, mm -hmm. as well as nutrients, vitamins and minerals. It will all be, always be higher, and higher when it's picked uh, ripe, right. you know. So if it's picked green and then held for a long time, um, whatever treatment it goes through in refrigeration to, to hold it till it can travel across the nation, and then be stored a little while longer and brought out gradually. Yeah. You know, um, well, these are these are things we see yeah. as a farmer. Uh -huh. Just the, the the we can watch the lettuce change mm -hmm. just in hours. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. You know, from the field to yeah, the, the refrigeration. Picked, you know, yeah, and things start changing, and there are right. subtle flavor changes as well. Mm -hmm. um, but but even even the color changes, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, and sometimes I, I know there used to be a big push for like there were like these antioxidant vegetable That's, sprays or something and. You were putting, oh, okay. putting the the the, 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 um, the produce counters were using, and right. and some people were like, oh, it's only vitamin C, and then uh -huh. there were some sulfites, and, and uh -huh. I'm not sure how how uh -huh. much it's it's done anymore, right. but there was some attempt mm -hmm. to use some sort of antioxidant mm -hmm. to prevent the mm -hmm. breakdown that was just happening because you mm -hmm. sliced the life of the plant, mm -hmm. and it was just slowly degrading. Mm -hmm. So are well, these are the phytochemicals yes, that you're talking about? Yes, and, kind and of many of them are uh, strong in a uh, plant food because um, they don't have uh, pesticides. So mm -hmm. they have to kind of fend for themselves, if you will. They have to do their own resistance to pests and weather and heat and so forth. Mm -hmm. So they become stronger and better. And then we in turn eat that food and get the benefit of that immunity, if you will. It's the plant's own immunity that then contributes to our immunity. Mm. So, so this will be sort of a microbiotic or a macrobiotic connection of the environment mm -hmm. that affects the food in a way that you would mm -hmm. benefit from the same exactly. defenses that that exactly. food would Exactly, exactly. It's all connected. Well, that's great. So well, it's pretty amazing that we've got a huge corporation compass, right. and you're a, a, an arm of yeah. that for the, yes. the health care system, yes. and you're really focusing right. on this concept yeah. that the and food that's grown, where the people are eating it, has a yes. higher value for something we can't fully define. Right, right. We need more research. Yeah. But you do have an instant psychological effect of yes. the people eating it. Right. I mean, on Thursdays and Fridays, when we have our farm stand set up, uh -huh. people walk through and you can watch the expressions on their faces. It's like art. I call it God's art. Uh -huh. but it's, it's beauty, it's shapes and colors and vibrancy, and it's very appealing. And so you walk by that, and even if you're just at work and you're busy going to your next patient or whatever, you you are visually educated that oh vegetables fruits beautiful delicious I want some so people yeah. actually walk around the vending machine to get to the fresh food <laughs> well I hope not yeah. <laughs> I hope they go straight there right but um it's um it's it's an education it's a it's a service to the staff and the visitors who come here. Uh -huh. I mean, you could go to the farmer's market on Saturday morning, but what if your kid has soccer mm -hmm. and you can't get there? I mean, this is just a convenience. So tell me how this, so, so do you have a whole bunch of farmers come here and set up inside the cafeteria? No, we use the food hub. Okay. We use the local food hub and they make the delivery and on Wednesdays and then we put it out on Thursdays. And um, 
So last year we used a farmer and he came and brought, you know, the stuff. And the year before that we used a different farmer and um, and it just this has worked out great. Wow. We, people so the food hub is like your, your clearing house. It's our, our main vendor and they've got 30 farms within 60 miles and uh, it's just working out really well. Great communication because we don't want to we don't want to rush the food. We mm -hmm. don't want to have this food on this day. We want to wait till it's ready. So there's a lot of communication. You know, what's ready this week? What's going to be ready next week? And waiting for nature. You okay. know. So does your chef talk to the food hub about uh, what's what's there? The or how purchaser do you do? does. The okay. purchaser talks to the food hub about what's there and what's available, and then the chef gets the message from him and then incorporates it into the uh, menu. So that's that's for the menu, but then also for the farm stand? Well, for the farm stand, we just take whatever there is, okay. whatever's seasonal, whatever's coming in that week. And so the, so so clients, guests, and staff can just purchase exactly. groceries to take home from the farm right. stand. We put out the Buy Fresh by Local guys, we put out the, the bags to fill and uh -huh. they go through the cash register and pay by the pound and wow. go home happy. So you're grocery shopping right here you're in grocery Austin. shopping at work. That's mm -hmm. great. Mm -hmm. every, every workplace should have that. A wonderful I, place to eat exactly. and you can take groceries exactly. home. Exactly. Yeah, it would be nice to have a CSA drop-off around, uh -huh. too. There's just a lot of ways to promote healthy eating. Now, is this an experiment you're doing here, Linda, or is this something that, that Morrison's M does throughout? Many, many Morrison accounts. I can't say that all Morrison accounts do this, have a farm stand, or incorporate local into their menus, but um, many of them do because of the, the encouragement from, from the um, management. So, if, if Morrison's, as, as the, the sort of umbrella mm -hmm. corporation for many of these mm -hmm. different facilities, mm -hmm. embraces this, that's, that's a pretty big effect. But what, but what is just one institution? What, okay. what, is, what is your effect? Let's just say that we serve over 4,000 meals a day. In, you, in your imagination, it's hard to comprehend that much food. That's more dishes than I can wash. <laughs> So if we increase our uh, inclusion of local foods into our menu as much as possible, uh -huh. then you, you can only imagine how much support that would give to the local economy, to the local farmers. We're concerned about the average age of farmers being 57. You look much younger than that, but... Thank you. Um, <laughs> it's all that fresh, fresh phytochemicals. Yeah. Yeah. They're chewing that wheat grass right, all the time. Right. So we, you know, uh, it, a, a healthcare institution, just by virtue of the size, can make a huge difference. And just taking a stand yeah. for local food, is, it's, a, it's a, a message to the community and a support of the community. Well, that's great. Well, it certainly makes a lot more sense mm -hmm. to bring in the fresh potatoes, mm -hmm. keep the farmers in business, mm -hmm. and then even make them available to right. the clients here versus plowing over that farm, putting in a highway so you can bring in right. the dried potato right, right, flakes right. from somewhere else. Yes. Yes, and so the the, uh, the possibilities are endless. That's great. Well, and that's people, great. people here, I mean, UVA has a sustainable program going and everybody's really aware we've got to act, we've got mm -hmm. to do more. Um, uh, people want to support farmers now. You know, you you, th you want to eat only humanely raised animals. Uh, uh -huh. m more people are saying those things, and so it's it's just people are just going to demand this kind of thing. Right. Well, that's terrific. Well, how about you introduce us to some of the other players? Okay. Because I think you do it all by yourself, but no. you probably have some help. <laughs> All right, Linda, so who, else, who else is working here to, in, well, this, in this sort of push to, to bring in this, this local okay, focus well, on food? Okay, well, my boss, John Nichols, who's the senior director, who uh, also happens to be a champion uh -huh. for Compass for Sustainability. Okay. That's 
There he is, right there. <laughs> All right. We'll rope him well, in here. He's the boss. I mean, he calls the shots. He makes he he makes sure that uh, we do these things. Yeah, we we'll just get you between us yeah. here, John. And All right. Then we don't have to hey, mic John. you. We'll just oh, yeah. as long Clark. as we stand really close, we can yeah, make yeah. it. <laughs> I was just bragging about your support of the whole program, and sure. from the very beginning, you know, I kind of was pushy a little bit at first, but. He was really? right there. <laughs> yeah. Well, did she bring local food and just pile it on your desk and say, you've got to use this? Pretty, pretty close. Yeah. Lots, <laughs> lots, of, lots of papers, lots of uh, ideas, lots of uh, pretty neat things. That, yeah. uh, well, we see her at the market with these huge carts and yeah, loads sure, and stuff. Sure. We wonder where it's been going. <laughs> well, you know, it kind of reopened my eyes. I yeah. grew up in a farming community, mm -hmm. so I forgot what it was all about. Uh -huh. you know? Yeah, you probably worked your entire life to get off the farm, right? Well, get a, I wasn't get a on job the farm, and now we still, want to go you know, back. You, you, yeah. you, you, uh, sometimes you work to get out of maybe the rural community mm -hmm. to do something different, especially when I, in my business. So um, getting back to those roots has been a pretty neat experience, and that's yeah. what she reminded me of. So it became a passion of all of ours here. To that's great. Really and he has children, too, uh -huh. and we all have you know, express the desire to do what we can for the world they're going to grow up in uh -huh. to be one that can feed them. Yeah, that's, that's pretty safely. scary if all we have is Twinkies made 2,000 years ago. <laughs> yeah. They never go bad, though. That's true. <laughs> so what does it mean to be a champion for Compass in local well, foods? Well, a, um, a few years ago, our CEO, uh, Scott McClellan, really set us on the path to be more um, socially responsible corporately. Okay. So um, he started by signing um, a pledge, Healthcare Without Harm pledge. Mm -hmm. this, and we were the first um, contract food service company to do that. And what it, that really says is that we'll be more sustainable in our uh, food service practices. Uh, we'll buy local when we can. We'll, um, what we do is we buy only sustainable seafood. We use cage-free eggs. Um, we, we really got away from trans fats. We have no trans fats in any of the foods that we prepare, serve, cook in. Um, the oils is all mm -hmm. trans fat free. We went to more of a fresh product. We don't use any frozen vegetables uh, oh, cool. within reason. There's a couple times we do yeah. for some things, but for the most part, it's all um, done by us here. Uh, it's not necessarily all local during the uh, winter months, um, but it really allowed us to say, well, if we're going to have to do it that way, where mm -hmm. we can cut our own fruits and vegetables every single day, then we might as well get what we can locally. Yeah. That's, a, that's really a big shift, you know? I mean, it I, is a big shift. I remember the shift. late 50s, 60s and the space program, everything was tang mm -hmm. and squeezing it out of a little, sure. and we were going to have a pill. Mm -hmm. Sure. And you sure. were going to have to cook. Mm -hmm. Sure. So well, it's interesting that we're now looking at, whoa, mm -hmm. we need to... Absolutely. It's better for the whole community, mm -hmm. not just the nutrition, but the whole community, to yes. have a food system. And, and it's, it's I'm, I'm, I'm not here to preach that we're doing the right thing. We're doing mm -hmm. it because it, it's the right thing. Okay? Mm -hmm. And so there, there's a slight difference. Uh -huh. There may be some gray area in that, but we do it because we feel that's the best thing for our folks that come in this cafeteria every day or the people that come into the, unfortunately have to come into the hospital as a patient. Um, and this will be the first year that we really are shifting uh, a lot of the food that we serve our patients to local. Mm -hmm. um, it's actually come down enough in, in price. Um, uh, we're able to uh, uh, meet the, the the local farmers are able to meet our demands and our needs in terms of volume, um, and that's really been our big shift. Um, the corporate social responsibility um, program that we have within Morrison and within Compass Group is um, second to none. There isn't any other food service company out there that does something like that. Um, and so it, it's a big change for us. I don't, you're going to hear more about um, Ag in the Middle, and that's mm -hmm. really been our, corporately our focus is to bring the middle-sized farmers back to the marketplace. Okay. And food, Compass Group is the largest food service company in the world. Um, we do, we're in 90 countries. Uh, we have $26 million worth of profit every year, $26 billion worth of profit every year. And so with that, we have a tremendous amount of buying power, of mm -hmm. course. Now, and does so Compass do any military? They do military. You, you name it, we do it. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we surpassed McDonald's a few years, a few years ago. We have about half a million 
employees, which is actually the ninth largest employer of any company in the world. And that's not to say that I'm here to preach about Compass Group. Mm -hmm. I'm here to say that we have an ability to make a difference mm -hmm. and a change in the way, mm -hmm. in the buying practices mm -hmm. of um, companies mm -hmm. that buy food. Mm -hmm. Well, maybe um, we can get some better airline food. Absolutely. You guys take we, over the airlines the one thing too? we don't do. We used to do it. Yeah, we need we to get, get Compass in the airlines. I don't know if you have a, a, a sustainable pretzel available, but yeah. uh, maybe, there, maybe there is <laughs> right, one. Right, yeah. There's locally made, but, you know, they're flying, so nothing can And everybody's local. stuck in the plane. They That's might right. as well have a farm stand. That's right. Right. Sure. Yeah. So tell us how that, that happened. You, you've now got well, a farmer's I, market in sure. the cafeteria now. Absolutely. I read uh, about um, uh, an article about Kaiser Parmente out in California, uh -huh. which we just got their account, by the way. Um, oh. And they do a farm stand every day, for, well, I don't know if it's every day, but they do it throughout the growing season, which is probably a little bit longer in certain places in California. Yeah, it's in their, like, in I think their, they're one day off a year. Right. Yeah. <laughs> New um, Year's or something. Um, they they, they, they also, don't grow anything on New Year's. They also other created day. a uh, CSA uh, drop, I don't even know if it's a drop-off site. They, they literally have a CSA where the farmers come and do all of their stuff right at their hospitals in San Francisco and in and around that, the Bay Area. Mm -hmm. So. They really are kind of the leaders when it comes to um, a local sustainable product within the healthcare industry, in my opinion. They've been doing it for a long time. Um, and I really wanted to be able to do that. Mm -hmm. They could do it, why can't I? I'm mm -hmm. not as big as they are, but pretty close. Mm -hmm. And so, with the help of the local food hub, it's been, it's been great. I, you know, I've, we had a tough time getting going. But, you know, we buy most of our produce from Produce Source in, uh, in, in Richmond. Uh -huh. um, they have an okay local program, but not nearly as, you know, when the local food hub came about, it just kind of fell in our lap. It's really nice to have them around. Mm -hmm. Well, that's great. So. Now, this must play into your negotiations with UVA for contracts to be here. That Absolutely. You're, that you're doing some of these. Absolutely. My, our client uh, is one person, but really it's the whole University Medical Center. Uh -huh. Our client is um, completely supportive of what we're doing. She really, really uh, uh, asks us and pushes us to be more sustainable. Um, actually, the, the governor signed Executive Order 82 last year and um, really said that put the, the, the task on all state agencies to be more environmentally friendly. Mm -hmm. um, so we, the, the, the university side, started a, a sustainability uh, committee and we followed suit and we have the same thing and we really try to find as many things, not just food-wise, but uh, other ways to be more environmentally friendly, recycling and so forth. Well, that's great. It's an expression that I use often to describe the current food system, conventional uh, industrial-based long-distance food system. And that is, it's like a freight train going the wrong direction even though there are lots of efforts to turn it around, what we can't do is turn it around fast unless we have lots of big buying power, like a hospital. I'm Michael Clark, your host for Meet the Farmer TV. Thank you for joining us for this four-part show on local food and the UVA health food system. Thanks for joining us for another Meet the Farmer TV. And please let each of our underwriters know you appreciate their support bringing you Meet the Farmer TV. Check out their website and tell them personally you appreciate their support underwriting Meet the Farmer TV. Meet the Farmer TV is made possible by Planet Earth Diversified, Melly Productions, and Leslie P. Jenkins Photography and Graphic Design. Culpepper's Channel 21 helping to preserve the agricultural history of Virginia, and In the Kitchen magazine, serving the community and everyone who loves good food.